Welcome back friends, I'm Scott Ritzma and in this video we're going to see 10 reasons why the believing Christian must accept the historical accounts of the Old Testament and that includes creation, the flood, it's all real history, Jonah and the whale, the Tower of Babel, the Red Sea parting, all of it. It's been said by Christian theologians and scholars that the Bible is not a history book. And these stories could just be made up stories meant to teach us a moral lesson. You're going to see how that is not acceptable from a biblical viewpoint allowing the Bible to speak for itself. But what prompts this video is actually a rather sad story. I'm speaking with a missionary who's been a veteran at this for 50 plus years teaching God's word and he tells me he no longer believes in the historical record of the scriptures except the gospels. He says, I have confidence in the gospels and that's about it. Now you're going to see in a moment that if you accept the gospels it brings everything else as a package deal. But I want to tell you first and foremost how the Bible presents itself. We can't impose upon it a view that we prefer. We have to allow it to stand or fall on its own terms. What are the literary genres present in the Bible when you encounter the Word of God? Poetry, letters, prophecy, parables, and yes of course historical narrative. And the Hebraic culture out of which the scriptures grew, the Jewish people were not a myth-making people. When it came to the historical records that they kept, it was places, names, genealogies, dates of people's ages. With the book of Genesis alone covering 2,000 years of the 4,000 years of biblical history. So what did Jesus himself teach about Old Testament history? 10 reasons why a Christian who accepts Jesus and accepts the Gospels must also accept Old Testament history. Number one, Adam and Eve, the story of Adam and Eve, Jesus acknowledged as real historical figures, real history. Number two, Jesus treated the story of Abel, Adam and Eve's son, as real history. Number three, the story of Noah and the flood. Jesus treated that as real history. We're putting the references up on the screen every time. Study it, look it up for yourself. Don't take my word for it. We're just gonna keep bullet pointing through these. Number four, Lot and his wife. Jesus treated them as real history. The story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Number five, Jesus teaches that that was real history. Then out of Genesis on to Moses and the serpent in the wilderness wanderings after the exodus from Egypt. Jesus teaches us that that is real history. Moses and the manna from heaven, same thing. The miracles of Elijah in 1st and 2nd Kings, you see the story continues in the Old Testament. Jesus taught that as real history. And even Jonah and the big fish. Jesus never said that these things are just made up stories. He treated them as real history, teaches us to do the same. So number 10, if the book of Genesis is good enough for my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then it and the whole Bible is good enough for me. If you agree, share this video. I'm Scott Ritzema with Belt of Truth Ministries. See you over at beltoftruth.tv, our subscriber channel with all of our seminars on various topics. And as always, those who can't support the work over there, the $7, if you can't afford that, it is free for the asking. Supporters, you make this work possible. Thank you. Beltoftruth.tv.